Hey guys, welcome back to Algorithm Explained. I'm David Kim and, I'm, and today we're going to go over another problem. It is going to be reversing uh, an input, which is going to be a string, and not using any of the already built-in reverse uh, functions. And so it's a pretty simple one to grasp today. Um, but let's still think about how we're going to approach this. So um, we're going to be given a string. Um, you could also ask, I guess, since it's not written here, what is the input? Because it might be an array, it might be something else. I guess string, string and array, that's the only two real obvious things that they would try to throw at you. But um, hey, if they didn't specify, then you need to ask, uh, unless you're going to have your function check for that. Um, so we're going to give them a string. Or we're going to problem's going to give us a string, and pretty much what we want as an output is the string. So we want when we're given a string, we want the string reversed. And so if we're given something like a b c a b c d, then we want d c b a. Oh, I messed that up. Uh, d. So it's supposed to be a d. D c b a. Cool. And so that's what we want if we we're given that. And so pretty much, let's think about how we're going to do it. We know that we have to iterate through, or do we Do we even have to iterate through the whole thing? That's a good question to ask. We know that we're going to have to at least touch on everything because we're going to have to flip its position. Um, but will we have to really identify every index of this uh, string? And uh, the answer to that is no, but that's definitely one thing to think about. Uh, maybe when you're optimizing your solution, you might go over that fact and uh, decide, hey, I don't need to do the second half of the loop. Um, also, when you're given a string that has an odd number of characters, maybe A, B, C, D, E, um, well, the C in the middle, if it's going to be a five letter or any odd number length, if we flip that, well, the C is not going to be flipped. So we also want to keep in mind, we know that the C is not going to be flipped. So at that point, is there an optimization we can do? Um, other than that, I guess uh, one thing to uh, really take notice of here is that we are dealing, well, if we're going to be writing in JavaScript, we're going to be dealing with strings. And you, we can't index into a string index, but we can't uh, mutate it at that point because um, strings are immutable. And so what we need to do is we're going to have to change those strings into arrays. And at that point, we can flip these indexes. and uh, at the end, we'll probably have to join them all together. And so here we go. Here's the, uh, the solution to this question. And pretty much, I guess, we'll walk through it. Uh, we'll walk through this, and then we'll walk through uh, two examples. We'll go over both the even case and the odd case, and kind of um, at what point, if you didn't have the most optimal solution, you could probably, at what point, you should probably be noticing that you can change it and then change it. So this is a, in JavaScript. Uh, our function name is reverse. We're going to be given an input string, and so we're going to just say string array because we do, like I said, strings cannot be uh, mutated on their indexes. We, uh, but arrays can. And so we're going to use the split method on the string, and we're going to create a string array, and uh, that just makes it so that we can flip these indexes. We're going to be using a for loop in order to go through the string and flip whatever indexes we need to flip, and at the end of that, we're going to be returning the string array, assuming that this for loop worked correctly and we flipped all the correct indexes, we're going to be joining it and pretty much returning it right there. Um, if we're going to take a let's take a look at this for loop a little bit. Uh, here we have math.floor with a string array dot length over two. We can we can go over that in more detail later. But the the important thing is what's going on here. Well, we have to flip indexes, and every time you're trying to flip something, we know that you can't really flip something without a temporary variable, simply because once you overwrite an index, um, you would probably need that value for, uh, for that other one. So say, say you want to sw switch A and B. If you make A equal to B, then what are you going to make that? You need a temporary variable to hold on to the A in order to make that an A later. And so that's, that's kind of why the temp variable is here. What we're going to do is we're going to hold on to one of the indexes then we're going to change that index. This one can now be changed. We can lose the information there because we stored it in temp. And so we'll make that equal to whatever this other uh, value is. And, uh, and we'll go over that as we do the example problem. And then after we ch successfully change that, we're going to change this. And we wanted the A, but of course, 
um, we don't have it anywhere else other than the temporary. So we do we make that equal to the temporary variable. Cool. And so that is this uh, reverse function. We didn't use the dot reverse. So pretty much the the only real criteria for this question was don't use like uh, the dot reverse method in your answer. And so we successfully uh, did it without that. And so at this point, we're just going to go over the, the question, or we're going to go over some example questions. If you're interested in that, stick with me here. Um, if not, thanks for watching. We So A, B, C, D, we're going to go over that first, and then we're going to go over A, B, C, D, E. And we're going to be going over these uh, examples without the whole math.floor string array dot length. We're going to assume that I is just less than string array dot length, something like that. Um, it could even be string dot length because uh, string array and string, they're both the same length. And so we're going to be doing it down over here. All right, so if we're given, uh, so we're working with this, A, B, C, and D. This is an even, uh, even length. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be trying to get this guy, D, C, B, A. And so one thing to note here is that although this array is empty that I'm uh, going to fill in later, uh, in reality, this is not an empty array. In reality, A, B, C, D is all here. We're just simply switching them. Um, I'm just leaving it empty for now just to make it cleaner for us. But um, yeah, this is not empty. If, it, if we were working with an empty array, we would, have, we would have created a new array, and that would have been empty. And so a couple of variables that we want to keep track of here is uh, the temp, what the temp is going to be. We also want to keep track of what the i is going to be. And we always start at 0, or well, we made our for loop start at 0. And we also want to know, kind of, let, let's just make note of the length, which this length is 4. Cool. And so um, pretty much what we already did was we already got through the, the first part where we split the string. So this is our string array. And now um, as we walk through this for loop, we'll just fill this out. Again, in reality, this will be switching around. And so let's go and ahead and take a look at this. So let i equal 0. So i starts at 0. And uh, i is less than, uh, remember, let's pretend that this just says uh, string array dot length instead of this whole math.floor thing. Let's pretend it says this. That's really messy, sorry. Um, but either way, it's, it is less than that. And so um, we'll move on. We'll move into the for loop. Temporary is going to be um, string string array at the index of i. Right now it is this. So this is 0, 1, 2, 3. I'll do this. So it, may, it might make it look easier. It might just be messier. But hopefully it helps. But um, yeah, i is 0. That's 0, a. That's what we're working with. We made temp a. And so now we're going to replace this index with whatever this uh, taps into. And that is string array dot length, which was 4, minus 1, which is 3 minus i, which is 0, so it remains at 3. So whatever is at the 3 place, we're going to put it into that index. And so whatever that the 3 place, that's the d, we're going to be putting it in here. That's what happened there. And now we're going to take this position of the index and then make that equal to temp. And so that was this, of course. And uh, we put temp in there, so a. And so now i gets incremented. Temp is going to be something else. And we go through. The, the condition in the for loop, i is less than string dot length, which is true. And so let's go ahead and take what is temp. Temp is string array of i, which is 1, which is b. And so now temp is b. And what we'll do here is at that index over here, we're going to make that equal to whatever this comes out to be. Um, so string array dot length, which is 4, minus 1, 3, minus the i, that makes it 2. So whatever that the 2 is now going to be here. C and vice versa, we we realize that this, that one was two, and of course that's going to change constantly. Um, so I'll just uh, let's make that that means it's gonna change. And so string array of two here is now equal to the temp, which was B. So that successfully changed it. And so at this point, uh, if you're running through this example with uh, kind of whoever you're interviewing with. You should know that your task is done. You have accomplished what you wanted to accomplish, yet the for loop is still running if you have this condition. And so that means that you're going to have to increment it and that it's going to count again. 
And so pretty much what's going to happen? Well, you're going, it, it is valid. So you're going to try to assign a new temp. Uh, the next temp is going to be C. And then you're going to come here and uh, string array of I, which is going to be 2. So you're going to be looking at this, and you're going to assign it to whatever is here, which is going to be undefined. And so this is pretty much going to be undefined. And most likely, this is going to be undefined too. And that's uh, you pretty much you had the right answer, but you went too far, and so you you ended up ruining your perfect answer. And so, kind of let's let's kind of think about what at what point were we done? We were done when we flipped it because, of course, we're not just flipping one at a time. We're not taking this and throwing it back there. We're literally flipping it. Thus, we're doing two times the work making sure two of the indexes are now in the right place with one iteration of the loop. And with that, we, can, we know that, well, we only have to go through half of it. And so once we go through half of it, then we know that the work is done. And so let's see if, get rid of this, if we were to have left it at that. So if we were to not have done this and just done stringer, Array dot length over two would that have been the end for us? So I would have been incremented after the index of one, and so then it would have been one. Is it is that less than string of length uh, string array dot length, which is four over two? Is this is this true? That is false, and therefore the for loop will not run. And pretty much string array is going to be what you have gathered here. You're going to join that, and you're going to spit that out, and that is the right answer there. And so at this point, math.floor still seems like it's not too useful, but uh, we will go through the, the next one, the one that adds the e to it, and that will make it clear why we need that math.floor. And so, so far, we have determined that the for loop only needs to go halfway. We don't need to go the full way because, as a matter of fact, if we do go the full way, we're actually going to break stuff and lose our perfect answer. So let's go ahead and just do another simple example, A, B, C, D, E, and um, A, B, C, D, E. And we're going to flip that. And in this example, it's more important that you do understand once again that we're not working with an empty array. Rather, we're working with this array, and we're flipping the indexes, and that if we don't touch something, it's still there. We're, we, I'm just working with an empty array here for visual purposes, just to make things clean, clean for us. And so let's uh, go ahead and keep track of some of these things again. We're going to keep track of temp. We're going to keep track of i. We're going to note that the length is 5 this time. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and work with this for loop. Uh, pretend that we don't have math.floor and that we only have string.length over 2. And let's just determine what that is right now. That's going to be 5 over 2, which is going to be 2.5. And it's going to be in a decimal format because in JavaScript it doesn't round for us. Uh, so let's go ahead and start working through this. Temp is going to be a string array of i, which is starting at 0, so it will be a. Um, yeah, let's get rid of that. So, or there we go. Uh, temp is a right now, and string array of uh, zero. So we're going to be replacing this place. And let's go ahead and put these numbers here just to make it easier for us. Length is five. Indexes go to four. String array of i, which is zero here, uh, that's going to be now defined with whatever is here. And so what is that? That is five minus one, that's four, minus i, which is zero. So it's going to be four. Whatever is at the four place, e, is now at that index. And so this becomes the e. So far, so far, so good if we want to flip this guy. And now, whatever was at that place, which is the 4, um, this is no longer valid. 4 is now equal to the temp, which was an A. And so that is an A. I guess incremented because we're at the bottom of the for loop. And we check that condition again. I is 1 less than 2.5. Yes, it is. And so we will move on into the, the loop again. Temp is going to be string array of I, which is now 1, which is B. So that's B. Uh, oh, I almost dropped my marker. Uh, string array of I, which is now this one, is going to be equal to whatever was at this index. So string array dot length, that's 5 minus 1, 4 
minus i, which is another uh, one, so that is uh, three. So whatever is here at the third place is now, we put it to here. And at that point, just remember, everything still looks like this. We haven't replaced that yet, but we're just not going to be, uh, we're gonna be working with the empty array here for visual purposes. And at the three, we're going to make that temp, which is a B. And so we're at the end of that, we increment I, and we're working with the two here. We check the condition of the for loop. Two is two less than string array dot length over two. Two is less than 2.5. So let's go ahead and change the temporary. Temporary is um, string array of I, which is going to be C. And so that one is equal to this. So let's take a look at this. String array dot length minus one minus I, which is going to be five minus one, which is four, minus one, which is going to be two. And so now we're making this equal to whatever is here. So technically that's still okay because we're pretty much taking the two and we're replacing it with the two, um, pretty much these equal to the exact same indexes. When you do string array of i, i, which was two, and you take string array dot length, minus one minus i, you took five minus one minus two, which equals to two. And so pretty much we're working with string array of two equals that. And yes, that does equal each other because that's just a, the C. But you have to ask, was that even necessary? Did we have to go through this for loop once, one more, one more time in order to accomplish pretty much nothing? You didn't change anything. And so the answer to that, of course, you don't have to do that. So how do we avoid going through a useless iteration of the loop. Well, if you do math.floor, which will take the 2.5 and change it to the two, you can, uh, you can uh, avoid situations like that. Say you, the, the index incremented to the two after the one. And so now in terms of our example, this wouldn't have been really re redefined yet because we didn't go there. We already know that it's defined at the C because again, we're not working with the empty loop or empty uh, array. We're working with an array and we're flipping these guys. Um, the condition will read two, because that got incremented after the last swish array that we did. Two is two less than two, and that wouldn't be true, therefore we would skip out of the for loop. And this would remain, it would remain a C without having to kind of try to replace itself to be a C. And so at that point, we'll take this and join it and return it. And so, that's pretty much it here. Uh, this is how you would have to go through reversing or flipping the indexes of anything in an array. Uh, if you're working with strings, of course, you do have to change to the array first. Um, I guess some key points here um, is that definitely if you're switching out, switching things out, you need a temp. Just like how if you're working with like a linked list and you need to switch things, you can't just take try to switch at the same time. You need a temporary, you need to replace things, something like that. And so um, I think a good thing to make note of is when you can optimize, because I think, I feel like optimization, that's a, that's a, it's not necessary. Um, of course, in the work field this, I feel like that at that point is necessary. In the interview, it might not be as necessary, but I feel like it's definitely good to kind of prove that you can work through a solution. You could first come up with a solution and then be able to recognize kind of the weaknesses in yours uh, despite it working. If you can optimize it then and there, that would be awesome. And so uh, if you have any questions about this, go ahead and write in the comments. Other than that, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll catch you in the next one.